Hey everybody, Dear Really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of The Men of Yoshiwara Kikuya, or Gyakuten Kikuya. We um, finished Iraha's, uh, all of his main stuff in the last episode, all of his extras and stuff. So this time we're going for his second season. It's unlocked now that the first one was unlocked. And uh, we'll be doing his main volume and that will unlock his sequel. So, sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Chapter 1, The Enduring Dream Yoshiwara is a knight's dream. Someone once said that, though I don't remember who. I met Iroha-san, the manager of the place called Kikuya. I dreamed. A dream for only one night. I was supposed to wake up at some point, but the dream didn't end as a dream. Misel, you stopped. Is something wrong? When I turned back, he was there. The man that I loved. No, it's nothing. I sometimes felt scared because I had this feeling that I would wake up from this dream. I smiled at yoroha san so as not to cause him needless worry. If you're okay, then it's okay. But if there's something difficult happening, you'll tell me? yoroha san you worry too much. His beautiful white fish-like fingers stroked my hair. Though familiar with this behavior, it tickled me and made my body wriggle. Because it's about you, Misao. I can never be too worried about you. Gosh, how long will this continue for? When I looked, there were some people behind Iroha-san who were carrying a large package. It will be over soon, so please wait a little longer. Iroha-san, what are you doing? That's how they always are, but it's still jaw-dropping to actually see it. I I'm sorry. Yes, Iroha-san always talked about things like this. It's true, though. Here is a great person when it comes to other things, but... If it's about you, Hideo-san, he always forgets those other things. The conversations between you guys are an institution on this island. Oh no, we're not that special. My face turned red with embarrassment. It's nice that you have such a great husband, Hideo-san. I nodded in agreement to her words. You can say good things about me, too, can't you? Huh? Such as that I have a beautiful bride. P please enough! It's just rare for them to see a young couple, that's all. I didn't think so. Yuroha-san seemed to enjoy our current situation and didn't stop them. And more than that, he seemed to spread rumors of us on his own, too. After we finished our morning supply run, Yuroha and I were heading back home. Yuroha-san, I'm always asking you this, but... I won't do it. I haven't even said anything yet, though. You probably understood since it was a conversation that I've repeated many times. I should have given it up, though. I feel embarrassed when you say things like that in front of people. I want everyone to know that I'm your husband, Misao. He said so lightly with an alluring smile across his face. I think everyone is well aware already. They need to be more aware, then. I think that there are limits to these things. Actually, the way you protest me so desperately like that, Misao, it makes me... Have I done something? So adorable and very lovely, it makes me... Just want to tease you. I looked down because I didn't know how to respond to what Iroha-san said. <laughs> you really are adorable. Iroha-san chuckled. Just then... Out of the way! Shipments are coming through! We moved to the side to get out of their way. A wagon brought up a cloud of dust as it made its way towards the docks. There's so much luggage, it's like a mountain. I heard that the daughter of a rich family will get married with a man from the mainland. At some point, Iroha-san had become some sort of counselor to merchants around here. I thought he might help them a lot, too. It was quite a hassle to gather this many ships to carry the luggage out. They must be holding quite a large wedding ceremony. I actually longed to hear the phrase wedding ceremony. Are you jealous? Just a little bit. A daughter of a shipping agent can't hold a wedding ceremony so easily. So I wanted to at least see a beautiful groom and bride. I see. I guess words might not be enough. It's sometimes important to have a form, too. What are you talking about? He just chuckled and said no more. After we finished our day's work, Iroha-san drank, which was rare for him. He drank the sake in one gulp and placed the cup to the side. Then he straightened himself up and sat in a breathtakingly beautiful manner. Misao, 
I have something important to tell you. Since coming to this house, he had never displayed such behavior. He was always relaxed. And because of that, this made me straighten my back with a nervous look on my face. Y yes What is it? Not something bad. Though I said that to myself, my heart beat loudly. Will you marry me? Huh? My heartbeat stopped. And at the same time, my breathing also stopped. I... I don't understand what you mean. Barely able to speak, I asked him that. It is strange, isn't it? Iroha-san said that when he took my hand. We're already married on paper. Yes, so I feel like we're already a married couple. But it's just words. I want to be a couple in form, too. An official couple. You mean that we'll have a wedding ceremony? Yes, but I can't decide and plan it by myself. If you are interested, Misao, then by all means, let's do this. Uh, of course! I want to have a wedding ceremony. Are you okay? Huh? With apparent enjoyment, Iroha-san deepened his smile. Everyone in this town will know about us. Even more, won't they? Uh, I understood the meaning of his smile. He was asking if I would proceed with the things that I protested that he'd not do every day. I'm okay. You may scold me as selfish, though. <laughs> I will think about scolding you later. Please be nice. My heart was a flutter. I didn't expect that he would actually have a ceremony. And he was the one to suggest it. I'm so happy. Suddenly I thought about his family. I heard that he couldn't be with them because he was an ogre. But if Iroha-san's mother knew of his happiness, she would surely feel happy. Iroha-san had a hard time because he was an ogre. I guess that she may have also had a hard time. Um, then... I want to tell Iroha-san's mother, too. My mother? Did I say something wrong? His eyes became sharp, and his hand that had been stroking my hand stopped. Um, has she already passed away? It would be great if that woman were dead. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Nothing. I have no idea where she is, so please give up. You don't know where she is? Then now's our chance. Let's find her. I'm against finding her. Iroha-san abruptly bought his beautiful face into a grimace. Why? I couldn't hide my surprise, because he rarely acted like this. Because I said so. He seemed to be pouting. You don't think it's enough to have the ceremony with just the two of us, Mizao? But it's a celebration. I wanted my mother to celebrate with us. I just felt the same way about Iroha-san's mother. You are still not satisfied, are you? Um... I want to be a family with you. Perhaps it's asking too much, but I want to be a family with you. You want to be a family with my family? You're strange. Do you really think so? When I saw Iroha-san and my mother talking, I sometimes longed for something like that. They talked as if they were true parent and child, even though they were strangers. Ah, oh, I guess I have no choice then. Iroha-san sighed reluctantly. All right then. I can at least do research on her during my work breaks. Thank you so much! But I really have no idea where she is, or what she's doing now, so don't get your hopes up. Okay, sorry for asking too much of you. Iroha-san pulled my hand that he had been grabbing before. In reaction, I fell forward to him, and I plunged my face into his chest. I can't say no if you ask me, Misao. As he whispered that to me, his fingers started to undress me, and I felt my bosom becoming cool. Um, um... His white, long finger traced up my swelled bosom. My body started to feel hot, and then I felt a familiar and strange nervousness. Your voice sounds hesitant. Could it be that you don't like this? He looked down at me with a teasing glance. I can't say no. In this kind of situation... <laughs> I see. I'm relieved to hear that. Hmm, Iroha-san. Iroha-san's lips licked my skin. His tongue persistently licked the tips of my bosom, making them sensitive with ripe heat. <laughs> this part of you is always adorable. Don't say such things. Hmm, I'll stop saying those things when you no longer feel embarrassed. He looked up at me with teasing eyes, so I looked away from him. Ah. <sighs> 
It seems that I'll be saying those things for a long time. Yuraha-san's tongue traced my skin and his fingers fondled my bosom, robbing my body of strength. He then pushed me down onto the bed and we slept together. The next day, Yuraha-san and I were preparing the store as usual. Just then, we got a problem. It's serious. Yuraha-san. A sailor was running toward the entrance of the store early in the morning. His face was totally pale, which told us that it was very serious. The sailor led us to the docks. I'm not too fond of a disturbance like this early in the morning. Yuraha-san knitted his brow and gave him some candid advice. All the sailors agree that we could consult you with this, Yuraha-san. So, really, I'm not the manager of this town. I've said that many times. We understand, but still, please, let us rely on you. The townsfolk who came to call him bowed many times. Yuraha-san, since they're bowing like this... <sighs> so, what happened? Well, a person showed up among the cargo. Are you saying that there was a stowaway? They nodded in agreement to my words. I definitely had heard that criminals would sometimes drift here from the mainland. But I thought it was just a rumor. Isn't it better to turn the person in to the police? Well, the person doesn't match anyone on the list of wanted criminals. So, why did this person come here illegally? That's the problem. The person is a young man who was holding a horned skull in his hands. Horns? That means... Haven't you guys heard the rumor of the ogre clan? It's not something I've heard of, because Iroha-san was the ogre from the rumor. But could it be? Is there an ogre like him? When I looked up at Iroha-san, he also had a severe look on his face. He must be beside himself with anxiety. Take me to him quickly. Y yes Yeraha san seemed not to be able to hold in his emotions, so he commanded the townsfolk the whole way until we arrived at the docks. He's over there. The guy in western clothing is the intruder. We looked in the direction where he pointed. There were people looking while keeping the distance and talking in hushed voices. I could see the young man with the crowd. That's... There stood a not fully grown up as adolescent boy. He's the intruder. And he's pretty young. Yes, maybe he's a little older than Kagero-san. He must be around that age, but why did a kid like him come here illegally? His somewhat sophisticated appearance was like that of a top gentleman in Yoshiwara. You could say that he had a sort of mysterious sensuality to him. His rare beauty drew people in, but still he had them keeping their distance as they watched. But that wasn't the only reason that people wouldn't go near him. A skull with horns. An ogre's skull. An ogre's skull. I mumbled the same thing as Iroha-san. The thing that the young guy had in his hands was certainly a skull, and it did have horns that normal humans weren't supposed to have. I came close to him and talked to him. Could you tell me what happened? But at that time, uh, so... Are you listening to me? I want to ask you something. N nothing where but... For some reason, the young guy didn't even look at me. I cast a questioning look to the townsfolk. We also tried to talk to him, but he's been like this the whole time. I see. That's why you came looking for a way to resolve this. We should turn this creepy kid into the police. That's right. He may be a criminal. More and more people started to say that he should be turned into the police. Invading the boat was already a crime, so no one could say anything against it. Everyone, please be quiet. Iroha-san said so in a well-projected voice. Everyone concentrated their attention on Iroha-san. Iroha-san had a calm expression on his face and raised his voice so that everyone could hear him. Won't you allow me to take him under my care? Iroha-san, what are you saying? I want to ask him something. But what if he's a criminal? If so, then he's supposed to be on the wanted list. That shows that he's not a criminal. Well, he did commit a crime once he came here, illegally. However, I have something I really want to ask him. But once you've asked him your question, where will he go? Luckily, he is a man, so I can bring him to Yoshiwara. If he doesn't like it, then I will ask someone to take him to the mainland. I see. 
then it may be better to let you take him to Yoshiwara. Once he stepped foot in that place, it wouldn't be easy for him to leave. The townsfolk accepted Iroha-san's words and then went back to their work. Then we went to a place where we could talk quietly. We headed back to my room. He's following us obediently. I understand the language. I see that you can carry a conversation. It was annoying to have so many people talking to me like that. So that's why he pretended he couldn't talk. What were you thinking? What were you going to do if they brought you to the police? I don't know. I... I'll think about it when it happens. I want to throw it out right away, but before that, I have a question. The boy closed his mouth, and he looked like he wasn't in a mood to answer. That skull. It's an ogre skull, isn't it? How can you determine that it's an ogre's? Just then, the youth gave his attention for the first time. I can tell immediately. It has horns. Yes, that's right. It has horns. But most people have never seen an ogre. The people on this island don't seem to be confident that it's an ogre skull. But you're different. Perhaps he felt some small thing in the way that Iroha-san spoke. When he looked at Iroha-san's expression, the youth appeared calm. So, what is it then? I want to meet an ogre. If one exists, take me to it. There's no such thing. There is, I know it. I don't think they'll reach an agreement at this rate. Learn how to talk to older people before you speak to me. Iroha-san strongly admonished him. I'm in no mood to change his attitude. The boy sniffed at Iroha-san and looked away. Iroha-san, we should compromise this time. You're right. I'm not his teacher. Iroha-san then appeared to restrain himself and faced the youth. The ogre that lives on this island is me. When he said that, the boy opened his eyes wide. You? Are you dissatisfied? She's your wife, right? He pointed to me and said that. That's not an issue. I've never heard of an ogre living with a human being. Are you saying that you know everything there is to know about the world? How arrogant. Prove it. Show me proof. I'm a witness. If he could accept that, then he wouldn't ask me for proof in the first place. Yuraha-san looked at me with a grin across his face. I felt something disquieting in the air, so I stepped back without realizing it. Misao-san, please be patient for a little bit. No, anything but that. I refused right away. Oh no. But Iroha-san wasn't the type to back down at a point like this. I haven't said anything yet, have I? I still can guess what you're up to. Then guess what I'm feeling in my heart while you're at it. I want to quickly finish talking to him and send him on his way. But... Please, Misao. With pleading eyes, Iroha-san grabbed my hand. Let's see... Think of another plan. Please think of another plan. Is there another way to prove that I'm an ogre? The only other way is for me to get really mad after talking to him. Th that's If that's what you want to do, Misao, then I don't mind. I didn't want him to get mad. The more I thought about it, the more it seemed that it was the only way. Out of desperation, I gave in and said it. Just a little bit, okay? Yes. Don't misunderstand. It's embarrassing for me, too. Though he said that, Iroha-san still had a cool smile on his face. How could I believe what he just said to me? Well, then. Iroha-san's hand stroked my cheek and then brought my chin straight up so I could kiss him with ease. Iroha-san's thin lips laid upon mine. He licked my tightly closed lips with his tongue, trying to split them apart. I felt I shouldn't accept his tongue, so I desperately tried to keep my lips shut. You're stubborn. Just then, Iroha-san narrowed his eyes with enjoyment. He began to bite my lips gently, and sometimes strongly. A tingling ecstasy ran throughout my body. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I took a large breath of air. At the same time, his springy tongue invaded my mouth. Ah, uh, no, no! Say whatever you like. Iroha-san's tongue licked all over the inside of my mouth, and it put my head into a daze. 
I didn't care if the boy was watching me. That's how crazy Ira-san's kiss made me feel. Misao, you're adorable. Ira-san's occasional whispers in between breaths tickled my ears. Uh, um... I was about to state my feelings of excitement in response to him, but I held back and stopped my begging. Oh, uh, Ira-san, enough. Sorry, but it's done. Ira-san turned into an enchanting ogre. Reluctant to stop, we exchanged one last deep, desire-filled kiss. And then we looked back to the youth, and... Oh, he got excited too from that? <laughs> huh? You're an ogre too? The youth also turned into an ogre. What a pervert of an ogre you are to get excited seeing someone kiss. You're the ones doing that in front of people. You're shameless. I could only feel embarrassed as they argued with each other. After waiting for them to calm down, we resumed the conversation with them in human form. What was your purpose in coming here illegally? My name is Azusa. I came here to ask for your help. Help? With what? An ogre's skull can sell for a high price in the land outside of this one. Because of that, my life has been targeted. Ugh. I wanted to raise my voice in surprise. When I looked up at Yura-san's face, he wasn't even surprised and still had a calm look on his face. I heard there was a place for ogres to escape to on this island, so I came here. I see. Yura-san seemed to understand him and nodded deeply. How can you be so calm? It seems that your life may also be in danger, Yura-san. I knew that already. Contrary to my insistent pleading, Yura-san continued to talk in a cool tone. I've always been persecuted. It's only natural for a rare item to have such high value, right? Um... That's horrible. That's horrible! How can people do that kind of thing to you, Ira-san? Anger coursed through my body. And not everyone can be innocent like you, Misao. I'm okay because this island is safe, and because he came here too. Yes. I can't really accept this, but I didn't want him to worry about me any further. But the problem is, his name is Azusa, right? This boy. I can't keep him here like this. I nodded to Iraha-san's words. Unfortunately, we couldn't have him in my house. I couldn't accept someone whose origins were unclear to me. To lower the risk of danger for Iraha-san, we let him stay tonight and we'll decide what to do about him tomorrow. Where are we going so early in the morning? Azusa-san followed us reluctantly, while stifling a yawn. Don't you remember our conversation yesterday? Iraha-san told him this in a straightforward manner. I think the safe place that you mentioned may be Yoshiwara. Why do you think so? There are guards watching the people who come in and out of there. If he was taken, the guards would find and bring the culprit to the police to be punished. I see. So that's why the people there also can't leave easily. Iraha-san nodded to my words. I will introduce him to Kikuya as a relative. He should remain there for the rest of his life. I don't want to. Azusa-san spat out an emotionless reply. Then I will take you to the police. Uh, what would you like to do? I, st I still don't want to go, but I'll go anyway. Yoroha-san accepted his words and nodded. And then he looked at Azusa-san as if he has just remembered something. You don't have any right to make a decision in the first place. Hmm? Don't forget that. Yura-san, please be a little kinder to him. Misao, even if you're asking me, I can't do that this time. If he learns some manners, though, then I'll think about it. What Yura-san said was right. Unable to say anything, I silently headed to Kikuya with them. Excuse me. Yura-san apologized before talking to the manager. Worried about Azusa-san, I turned my attention to him. But his eyes hid his feelings and told me nothing about what he felt. I wondered if he would do well from here on. Well, since you're asking Ira, of course I will accept. Thank you so much. Can you make him work hard? <laughs> yes, he is handsome, so I'll have him work as a gentleman. Wh what What did you say just now? Azusa-san looked up at Iroha-san with a grim face. You have to be a gentleman of the night. I refuse. 
I'm not asking you to decide right this instant. While you work as a helper, you should think it over. If you really don't want to, you can quit. But you need to understand this is the only place for you to stay. Yuraha-san's voice was more severe than usual. What's all this commotion? Are you a new gentleman? Kikuya's famous top gentleman showed up. Takiyo-san, to Tokiwa-san. Oh, I heard an interesting voice from upstairs, and I saw Takeo going down. Oh, our top gentleman has a bad habit of sticking his neck into everyone's business. Ma, you also came here with me because you were interested in what's happening. This is a very noisy shop. Hey, I know you're new here, so I'll let it slide. But what's with that tone of yours? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> He's as likable than Tokiwa. No concern of mine. They seem to like Azusa-san. If this is how it is, then they'll surely open up quickly. They accepted our request, and Iroha-san and I left the shop. A few days later... Excuse me, are you in here, Miso? Ah, yes, I'm coming now. When I went outside, Kagero-san was standing there. What happened? I was asked to run an errand on the way to school. I see. Thank you so much. No, it's nothing. What happened? He always acted very cold towards me, but he seemed to be frustrated today. So, what is your errand? It's just about the new boy, Azusa. What happened to him? Since Iroha-san introduced him, no one has warned him yet, but he has everyone at the limit of their patience. I didn't expect this to be about Azusa-san. It might be the reason why Kagero-san was in a very bad mood now. There are too many problems with his personality. Please take him away from us soon. Oh no. With his attitude, we won't get any clients. If he stays at Kikuya, we'll be disgraced. I... I don't think he has any bad intentions, though. I was just asked to relay that message. So please, tell Iroha-san. Having finished his errand, Kagero-san then left quickly. So, Kagero asked me to take him off their hands. When Iroha-san came back from outside, I told him about what happened earlier in the day. It sounds like he's been causing a lot of trouble for everyone. Uh, that said, it would be bothersome if he stayed here. But we're the ones who took him in. After I said that, Iroha-san stopped talking. Uh, all right. So are you going there to pick him up tomorrow? No, I'm going to Kikuya to correct that attitude of his. What are you saying all of a sudden? There's no other choice. The only place that Azusa-san can stay is Yoshiwara. I don't need dinner tonight. I'm going now. Before I could stop him, Iroha-san turned his back and went out amongst the people in the street. Iroha-san... A sense of unexplainable worry spread through my mind. All that I could do was try not to think about it, and pray that he finishes his job successfully. That's it for this episode, and I hope that you might be interested in hearing the rest of the story. I'd love to see you in some of my future videos, and I'd be grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with some of your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. They're really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.